Hi coaches, Ron Silico here. What I want to do in this video segment is talk about defensive fundamentals in our ball matchup zone defense. And one of the points I do want to make is we try and teach the same defensive fundamentals in our man-to-man -man systems and our ball matchup zone systems. What we feel that accomplishes is it reduces our teaching time. We're only teaching one technique and we can be consistent with that. We believe valuable teaching time and consistency will help you as coaches communicate to your players. So let's talk about on-ball play. Ball pressure, that is of paramount importance and probably the most important fundamental we have defensively. Whether we're in a man-to-man -man or a zone defensive setting, if you can have great ball pressure that's, that stops or reduces dribble penetration dramatically, what we try and talk about with our players is can you absorb three or more dribbles while you're guarding the basketball? If you can do that, we're going to be successful. Jumping to the ball, the second piece. After the pass has been made, take one step to the ball, two steps to the basket. We want players doing that so they can get into help situations and take away high percentage cuts as soon as possible. So ball pressure, jumping to the ball, huge for us. And what we see is if straight line drives are happening, if easy passes are being made into the interior of our zone defense or our man-to-man -man defense, the big culprit is usually the ball pressure, and if high percentage cuts are being made, the culprit is usually we're not jumping to the ball effectively. Off-ball play. Whether you teach an on-the-line, up-the-line system or a ball-you-man triangle system of help positioning away from the ball, we believe that you should do both, whether you're in the man-to-man -man or the ball matchup zone defense. How do you guard the dead dribble? Do you, is it a situation where in a man-to-man, -man, if the dribble's picked up, you get players in denying position at that point? Well, that's what we teach, and we want, we want our zone extending out into denying positions if the dribble has been picked up. We want to exert pressure as much as we can. And I think the most important point, and one of the reasons that most teams play, man, play ball matchup zone defense or another zone defense is because of the help it provides, of course, in a man-to-man -man situation, you want to have great help as well. But we think the three-on-five situation, where whenever a ball is on one side of the floor or the other side of the floor, you want five defensive players guarding three offensive players. That's the ideal situation I think we all want as coaches in terms of providing help is that we've got, we've got those five guys guarding three offensive players on the side of the floor. Closeouts. Boy, closing out in defense is something that is really hard to do as a defensive player, and we have to teach this constantly, whether we're teaching man-to-man -man or zone, because poor closeouts either A, allow open rhythm jump shots if the defender is not aggressively coming out, or B, allowing straight line dribble penetration against your defense. So closing out is really important. So however you teach it, you are going to have to continually drill it and you continually drill it so your players do it right. And then post defense. Do you, are you a fronting team? Do you three-quarter the post? Do you play behind the post? Do you double-team the post? We believe you can do all those scenarios, whatever you want to do within the ball matchup zone defense, even doubling the post. If you've got a designated doubler, if you've got double teams that come from the perimeter, we have in the past have gone big on big using our four and five men to double the team the post. You can do that in the ball matchup zone. So those are the components that we talk about when we're playing post defense.